Today's section is the final section in Chapter 3, and it's over 3.4 factoring expressions. If you would, pull out your red pen and let's fill in these notes. I'm hoping that GCF is a concept that you remember from back in fifth and sixth grade, but what does GCF stand for? Greatest common factor. Okay, so you're trying to find the greatest common factor between two numbers. Repeat this saying with me. Factors fit into numbers. Factors fit into numbers. So I just want you to remember, always, when you're looking for a factor, it's going to fit into a number. And then today we're going to be talking about factoring expressions. This is where you pull out the GCF, or the greatest common factor, between the terms. The question up here is, what is GCF? What does GCF stand for, class? Greatest common factor, okay? How do you find the GCF? The way that we're going to do that is by listing factors, okay? So first step, what does it tell us to do? Choose the... We're going to choose the smallest number. Next, we will list the... The factors of that number. Then, number three says we'll start with the largest number and work our way down the factors until we find a factor that goes into the other number also. And then finally, the biggest factor of both the numbers is the GCF. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but we're going to use these four steps to help us find the GCF of the next couple problems. The instructions are asking us to find the GCF. In order to find the GCF, we're going to use those four steps that we just wrote down. Step number one, what did it say? Choose the smallest number. Choose the smallest number. Guys, out of 8 and 24, which one is smaller? Eight. The 8. I want everyone to put an 8 over here to the side. Looking at these notes here, what does step number two that you just wrote down tell us to do? List the factors. Remember, say the saying, factors fit into numbers. Okay, so we know one can go into an eight. One times what equals eight? One times eight. Let's go to the next number after a one, a two. Can a two fit into an eight? Yeah, two times what equals eight? Two times four equals eight. How about a three? Can a three go into an eight? No. no, it cannot. How about a four? Yes. yes, but if you notice, I already put a four right there. So now I'm done. Those are all the factors that can fit into an eight. Now let's go to step number three in our notes that we just wrote right above. What does number three say? Start with the largest number and work your way down the factors until you find a factor that goes into the other number. So we're trying to find something that also can go into this 24, okay? So start with the largest number, an eight. Can an 8 go into a 24? Yes. yes, it can. Then that means that's my GCF. So I want everyone to circle it. That shows us that that's the GCF. And because all the instructions have asked us to do is to find the GCF, you're just simply going to write GCF equals 8. All right, let's do another example just like that. Go on to problem B. Remember, we're still using these steps, the four steps that help us how to find a GCF. First, we're going to list the smallest number. Class, what's the smaller of those two numbers? Nine. A 9. So off to the right, let's write a 9. Step number 2 is asking me to list the factors of that number. Huang, what's the first set of factors that goes into a 9? Very good. You'll always start with a 1 and multiply it by itself. Next up, Jalen, can a 2 go into a 9? No, it cannot. Angeline, can a 3? Yes, how many times? Three times. Now look. I repeated myself, a 3 and a 3. That means there's no other numbers that can fit into a 9. So now read to me once again. What does step number 3 say on our steps up above? Start with the largest number and work your way down the factors until you find one that goes into the other number. Let's start with a 9. Class, can a 9 go into that 15? No, no it cannot. Then go to the next smallest, the next largest one, a 3. Can a 3 go into it? Yes. Everybody circle the 3, and that means you have now found that the GCF equals 3. Okay, so for our first steps today, the only thing it asked us to do was to find the GCF. So this is how you find the GCF. Next, the instructions ask us to do something a little different. It asked us to factor the expression using the GCF. There's three steps we need to do. First step, what does it say? Find the, GCF. Find the GCF. That's what I just taught you to do in those examples right before this. Next it says to put the GCF where? Outside, outside the, the principal. 
parentheses. Outside the parentheses. Basically, what we're doing today is we are doing the opposite of distributive property. Okay, so I'll teach you how to do it in just a second. The final thing is you take each term and you're going to do what with it? Divide it by the GCF. Divide it by the GCF. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is find the GCF. Remember, when we're looking for the GCF, we are using our steps that we had at the very top of our notes today. First one was choose which number? The smallest, the smallest number. Ava, what's the smallest number? 18, put it off to the side. We're going to find the GCF by listing the factors. Noah, what's the first set of factors there? 1 times 18. Matthew, what's the next ones? 2 times 9. How about a 3, guys? Can a 3 go into it? Yes, how many times? 3 times 6 equals 18. How about a 4? No. What about a 5? No. How about a 6? Yes. But look right there. We already have a 6, and I would just be writing 6 times 3. So that shows me I'm now done listing the factors. Let's start with the biggest number. The first one we have, the biggest number, is an 18. Can an 18 go into a 28? No, no not evenly. How about a 9? Can that go into a 28? No. no. So we're keeping on going down. What about a 6? No. no. A 6 cannot go in evenly. Let's go to the next one. How about a 3? No. What about a two? Yes. yes. That's the biggest number that can go into both the 18 and the 28. That means that is my GCF. Okay. Now we're not going to write GCF equals two. By you circling it right here, you're showing me you understand the GCF equals two. Now we're going to go to these instructions we had right there. We just found the GCF. What does the second step there tell us to do? Put the GCF outside the parentheses. So our GCF is a 2. Now we're going to put that on the outside of, we're going to rewrite our original problem, which said 28x minus 18. You'll notice I made my parentheses a little bit bigger, and there's a reason for that. Because there's still one more step. The last step tells me to do what? Divide. Take each term and divide it by what? The, the GCF. Okay, guys, what was our GCF? Two. Two. So I have to divide the first number by two, or the first term by two, and the second term by two. Okay, so now what number did we have outside the parentheses? Two. A two. Drop down your two. Now we're going to work together to see this problem right here. I have 28x divided by two. Class, what's 28 divided by two? 14. 16. 14. 14. And what family are we in? X. X. Then we have this right here, negative 18 divided by 2, negative 9. Negative nine. And that is how you factor the expression using the GCF. Now let me show you something. You don't need to write this part down, but just let me show you something. Remember with distributive property, you have to multiply it by everything in the parentheses. You guys remember that? Guys, what would 2 times 14x be? 28x. See, just like that up there. And then, what would the 2 times the negative 9 be? Negative 18. And notice right here, it is the same thing. So if you were to, as I just said, we have basically just done the opposite of distributive property. We have taken the thing out that is distributed in now. Okay? So that is what we're doing basically today, is the opposite of using our distributive property. And that's how you factor the expression. Let's do another example. Going over to problem B. The first thing you want to do is find the GCF. Who wants to help me with this? Very good. <clears throat> the smallest thing is a 4, so we're going to take a 4 out. What are the factors of 4, class? 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. Times two. Amira, looking at that, what is the biggest number that goes into both a 4 and a 20? 4, four is correct. So everybody circle that 4. That means that's my GCF. Myra, what do I do now that I know the GCF? That is correct. And then you're going to put the uh, original problem inside of parentheses. And what do I have to do next? Very good. You divide it by whatever you pulled out of that expression. So we're dividing both of them by 4. Okay. We're still going to keep that 4 on the outside of our parentheses. And what is 4y divided by 4? 1y. Do I need to keep the 1 there? 
No, that's an understood one, so we can make that imaginary. Then we have negative 20 divided by 4. Negative 5. Negative 5. And once again, if you wanted to work it out, you could see 4 times y would be 4y, like our original problem. And then you can also see that this 4 times negative 5 would have equaled the negative 20. Once again, that's just a way to double check your work. All right, the next one is actually giving us an in interesting piece of information. It says to factor out the coefficient of the variable term. Remind me again, guys, what's a coefficient? The number part of the variable term. So when you look at that, the variable term, remember a variable is a letter. So what's the number part that's attached to the letter there, class? One half. One half. I want you to circle that. Basically, the interesting part of this is I don't have to find the GCF. It has told me exactly what to factor out. So I get to basically cut out a step. I don't have to find a GCF because it told me take out the one half. So we're going to put the one half on the outside of the parentheses. Then remember inside the parentheses we always write the original problem. And what do I have to divide each term by? One the number outside the parentheses, which in this case, as you said, was one half. Before we go on, because sometimes looking at something like this, it can be a little bit freaky, okay? But I want to help you with an idea. What is 5 divided by 5? One. 1. What's 10 divided by 10? 1. What's 30 divided by 30? 1. What do you think a half divided by a half is? 1. Because anything divided by itself will always equal 1. So class, we're going to take that 1 half and keep it on the outside of our parentheses. But focusing on this next part, the first term there, it says 1 half divided by 1 half x. One. What's half divided by a half? One. 1, and that's the x family. Once again, we just talked about it. You don't have to put that 1. You can make it imaginary. Then I'm going to bring down my plus sign. Next up, once again, this looks like kind of a funny problem, but it's saying 3 halves divided by 1 half. Am I allowed to divide fractions? No. no, you are not. What method do I have to use? Everybody up at the top, I want you to write KFC and draw a little cloud around that in red to remind you, you're not allowed to divide fractions, but you are allowed to use the KFC method to find your answer. So instead, according to KFC, I'm going to keep the first one. What do I do to the second one? Flip the second and then change the operation. Remember when you multiply fractions, you are allowed to cross, multiply. cross multiply, and then cross reduce them. So those would both become ones. And then what does that whole thing become? Three. Just a three. So your answer is one half times x plus three. Once again, I'm still factoring out the coefficient. Hope, what is the coefficient of problem B? Not 3 over 2. That's my constant. 3 fourths, okay, because that is the number part of the variable term. So I'm taking that 3 fourths out, and then I've still got to multiply everything else by that. Hayden, what should I do next? Excellent. We are always going to divide it by the number that I took outside of the parentheses. So both terms get divided by 3 fourths. Talila, what should I do next? Okay, first we're going to take that 3 fourths down and then divide 3 fourths by 3 fourths p. And what does that equal? 1p. And we'll just write it as a p. And the next one, off to the side, we know 3 halves divided by 3 fourths. Keep the first one, flip the second one, and then change the operation. I'd like you guys to cross reduce. When you cross reduce, what'd you get? Uh, two. A two. Is that a positive two or a negative two? Negative. It is a negative two. So your final answer is 3 fourths times p minus two. 
Still, we're going to be factoring out the coefficient. Remind me again, what is the coefficient class? The number part of the variable term. Guys, what's the coefficient of this problem? Not 2.5m, but just 2.5, just the number part of the variable term. Now, if you remember, we don't like the constants to be first, right? What do we like to be first? The variable term. So let's switch this around. 2.5, is that a positive or a negative? All right, so we're going to say 2.5m. And 5, is that positive or negative? Positive. So we're going to say plus 5. Now it's asked us to factor out the coefficient of the variable term. So we're going to take that 2.5 and put it on the outside. And then remember, we are multiplying it by the original problem. Jalen, what should I divide each term by? Very good. You always divide it by whatever it is that you have taken outside of the parentheses. So I'm dropping down my 2.5, which is on the outside. Class, what is 2.5m divided by 2.5? 1m. 1m. Plus, on the next part, we're doing 5 divided by 2.5. Now, you guys can do that work there on your paper if you want, or you can use your calculators. I'm okay with either one. Okay, so just remember, you are putting this first number, 5 divided by 2.5. When you do that, you get positive 2. Okay, if you're using a calculator, you've got to make sure you're at least putting those numbers in the calculator correctly. For section number 4, it is asking us to factor out the indicated number. That just means the number that it gives to you. So what is it asking us to factor out for problem A? Negative 4. Everybody circle that, negative 4. So that shows me I am taking a negative 4 out of my original problem. And then we will just continue to do them exactly the same way we've been doing them. Ava, what should I divide both the terms by? Negative four. Very good. Thank you for saying negative 4 and not just a plain old 4. Okay, so the negative 4 is on the outside. I'll drop that down. Class, what's negative 4 divided by negative 4? P? Negative P. Not negative P. A negative divided by a negative always equals a positive. positive. So it would be positive 1P or just plain old P. Then I'm taking positive 8 divided by negative 4. The answer is two. negative 2. Negative two. Positive. Remember, you've got to think of the even and odd rule whenever you're doing multiplying and dividing integers. Next one, Gavin, what am I factoring out for problem B? Negative 5 is correct. So we're going to take that negative 5 out and then write the original problem. What should I do to every single term? Divide it by negative 5. Divide it by negative 5. Still, I've got my negative 5 on the outside. What happens to negative 5 over negative 5D? turns into a positive, yeah. positive, 1D. positive 1D. So we'll just have plain old D. And then I have positive 30 divided by negative 5. Negative, negative six. 6 is correct. Remember, once again, if you wanted to do reverse distributive property, you could see that this negative 5 times D is negative 5D, which is what we had up there. And then negative 5 times negative 6 is positive 30, which is also what we had up there. All right, as I looked around, about half of you got this right. Remember, the first thing you want to do is find what the factors are of the smallest number. What was the factor, class? An eight. an 8. So we have to factor an 8 out of 16n minus 24. Remember, you've got to divide by 8 for both of those terms. Keep the 8 on the outside. What does 16n divided by 8 become? 2n. A lot of people forgot that that was in the n family. And then negative 24 divided by 8 is negative 3. Negative three. So yeah. this is the correct answer. Raise your hand if you got that. Okay, excellent. All right, try problem B. Do it the same way. Remember, factors fit into numbers. So the GCF that we choose has to be able to fit inside of both of them. 7 is the smaller one, which means 1 times 7 are the only two numbers that are the factors of 7. Which one fits into both of them, class? 
Seven. The seven, okay? So I'm taking a seven out of 42A plus 7B, which means I have to divide both of them by seven. Keep that number on the outside. A lot of you guys just left that behind and found a different answer. You have to keep that seven right there with you. What's 42A divided by seven? 6 A. Plus, what's 7 B divided by seven? 1B, but we don't need that one, okay? Once again, notice you have to make sure that 7 is still outside of your parentheses. This is asking us to factor out the coefficient. Guys, what's a coefficient? The number part of the variable term. The number part of the variable term. What's my coefficient? 3.5. 3.5. Now, there's something wrong with this original problem. You're right. I want the variable term to be first. So 3.5H, is that positive or negative? Positive. It's a positive. We're going to put positive 3.5H first. 42, a positive or a negative? Positive. Also a positive. I'd like you to try this one on your own. Factor out the coefficient. It tells us exactly what to factor out so we don't have to find a GCF. What am I taking out, guys? 3.5. 3.5. Then you have to multiply the original problem, but then I have to divide everything by... 3.5. Good job. You always divide it by whatever number you took out of the parentheses. All right. So remember, drop down the 3.5. How many of you remembered to do that? Okay. What's 3.5H divided by 3.5? Just 1H. And what's 42 divided by 3.5? Not 1.2. 12. Final problem of the day, we are factoring out the negative 8. So take that outside of the parentheses. And what do I divide everything by? A negative eight. When I looked around, some of you just put an 8. You will get a wrong answer if you do that. You've got to divide it by what you factored out. And we factored out a negative, okay? Check to make sure your work looks like my work. The negative 8 continues to stay on the outside. Let's focus on the first thing. A negative divided by a negative equals a? Positive. A positive what? Positive 4 Okay, a positive 4, and that was in the D family. Focus on the next one. A positive divided by a negative equals? Negative 7. Negative 7, and that is your final answer. Okay, and there's no homework for the weekend.